Hey everybody, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil and it's time to talk QI. Quick intro this week. This week's viewer recommendation takes us to series J, episode five. It's called J Places. Let's jump right into it, guys. Should be a good one. And welcome to QI, where tonight we'll be journeying to destinations, beginning with J. And joining me are the jet skiing Sandy Toxvig. Nice. Hello, Sandy. The jet setting Susan Kalman. Hello, Susan. The jet engined Bill Bailey. Hello, Bill. Okay, awesome. Great lineup. Still being probed by Gatwick Security. Alan Davis. <laughs> What's the worst airport in the UK, everybody? Is it Gatwick? And Alan goes. <laughs> Try that again. It's never going to work, is it? it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, let's have an easy one to start with. Strictly speaking, where does the phrase chariots of fire come from? It's a film. film. Where does the, where does the phrase... Apollo? The Greek, therefore? Originate? It must be Shakespeare. No. And, oh, the chariots of fire. Well, like Jerusalem, the hymn Jerusalem. Oh! oh. No. That's it's embarrassing how long it took you to get the wrong answer. <laughs> it comes from a poem by William Blake, Called Chariots of Fire. No, no. <laughs> I'm ashamed of you. You must know the first line of. Uh, uh, I must, but I can't be asked to tell you. Well, no, <laughs> and did those, those feet, feet in ancient, in ancient times. times? Thank you. Oh, Finally, we got. Oh, I know that. Yes. <laughs> The name of the poem, Those and it's, oh, it's referred mistakenly yeah, as a hymn. Oh, Thank you for starting in my key. La, 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 come on! <laughs> Jerusalem's one of these hymns that has not come over to North America. I know, like, everyone in the UK seems to know it like the back of their hand, but I swear I've never heard it. Yes. So yes. what is the story of Jesus coming to England? Uh, is there a film about it? Yes. yes. <laughs> and then Not they... to my knowledge. <laughs> well, then I'm in the trouble. Holy... <laughs> this is what people say now when they don't know the answer. They say, I'm out of my comfort zone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a legend and it, yes. that Jesus came to England. Yes. And did those feet, i.e. those feet, his feet, in ancient times. Yes. Nice. Was it Glastonbury? The audience knew... Ah, thank you. Glastonbury. And he went with his uncle. What was his uncle's name? Bob. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Bob, Christ. Christ. Bob <laughs> The same as his father's name. Joseph. Joseph, and he was named after a place. Uh, Arimathea. Is it like working with very slow no. children? No. <laughs> Thank you. Say it again so the camera can get it clearly. It's, um, I was in... Joseph of Arimathea. No, I said it. I said it. Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph of Arimathea. One of the knights from Last Crusade. Indiana Jones. It has to be said, Arimathea is only mentioned once. No one knows mm. where it is, where no. it was, where it could have been. It anyway. Could have been a falafel tent. <laughs> 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 Should Mary come? Was, was planted. It was the, sorry? Mary, the mother. I just wondered if Mum I came don't, as well. I don't think she did. Boys Jesus. weekend. <laughs> we <don't>... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. But I would give you 20 points each if you could mention the two other places that the myth says they went to. Uh, wait, I know this. The, the founder of the Athea Society said he was doing the washing up in his flat. He heard a voice said, "You have been chosen as the, the uh, planetary representative of Earth." So immediately he went, "Oh, right, I better do that then." Oh, yeah. and, uh... <laughs> Can I just ask how much Bill knows about washing up? Because you do it like you're typing. You did that for yeah. washing up. <laughs> that Penzance was one, oh. Okay. Oh. and the other was Falmouth. Now, um, what can you tell me, as we were on the subject of Jerusalem, about the Jerusalem artichoke? Not oh, an artichoke. It isn't what. It's from Jerusalem. Or an artichoke. Ah. That's absolutely correct. What else can you tell me? You said it's not from Jerusalem, isn't it? An artichoke, and isn't it? it's not an artichoke. Ah. Um, oh. Do you know why? It's just a lie. The whole thing's a lie. Yeah. It's a Vancouver tomato. Jerusalem oh. is a corruption of what it actually is. We used oh. to grow them Dale. in America. Hickama? It is the only endemic, original, natural vegetable from North America. Is that right? There is none other. So if it looks like a sunflower and you say it's... No, say, say sunflower in, in Italian. Girasole. Jerusalem. Girasole. 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 Oh. To the As sun. As in gyroscope. 
to the sun. Girasole. So Girasole. It became Jerusalem. Oh, yeah, so, 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 we call it a sun. Oh, they're sun chokes. Is, is that a sun choke? Is that what makes it a sun choke? Helio is sun. Turn. Good work, good work. Turn. Helio sun choke. Heliotrope. 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 Heliot
<laughs> I've never seen anyone look more serious than the woman in the middle. Yeah. She does. <laughs> <laughs> well, presumably the pick-me-up part depends how fast the train's going. Yeah. <laughs> Any whether it's got a cow I've catcher or not. Like that. I always want to have a moustache and twirl it. <laughs> and we know the music that goes with it, don't yeah. we? Mm. There's that, that, yeah. That's, yeah. Sign with, yeah. And, That's the same as the washing up. Is, uh, yes, it is. Yeah, yes. Villain's <laughs> last name is Snodgrass. <laughs> Snively Snodgrass? Or do I... Yeah. Dangerous sport involving trains. Do you know what that chicken, might... playing Riding chicken, the roof. Not quite playing running chicken. on the roof. Running on the roof. Oh, roof no. surfing, as it's known. <laughs> That's so not so much running as having a picnic, really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm having a senior moment. The famous Gullum. volcano near Java. Krakatoa. 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 What's the name of the movie? East of Java, but Krakatoa is west of Java. East of Java. East of Java, yes. Geographically incorrect. It's actually west of Java. Oh, west of Java, yes. It is. It's between Sumatra and Java. It's not no, going to south. Not what, south. What can we do? We can take it north. North. East south. Of Java. East. East. It's going to be fantastic. So, uh, within within <laughs> ten years, tell me when this great, huge explosion. 1883. 1883. 88. 86. It's in the 1880s for sure. 82. Viewers at home, brace yourselves. Oh, hello. Krakatoa was in 1883. I don't get it. Oh, nailed it. Well done. WTF! <laughs> it was the loudest sound, mm. apparently, that has ever existed, or at least as far yes. as we know, and it was heard 3,000 miles away. You could actually hear it 3,000 miles away. And it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was broad. Winter for years, wasn't it? No, the winter for years was actually another. That was an 1815 volcano. And that was... And it was known as the winter of 1815. It, it might have been Tambora. It was my Tambora. Tambora, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. When eventually a human party of people arrived at the site, they found, and I'm including both vegetable and animal matter here, one living creature, and I will give you ten points if you can tell me the species. It was, a, was it a spider that they Yes! Found? It was a spider. <laughs> <laughs> One spider. Everyone is on cracking form here. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's really on crack. What's the, well. what's the spider going? Oh, sod. Indeed. Using two legs at a time. It was doing the washing up. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Jerusalem washing up spider. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Right. So, what was the most hurtful thing Rambo's boyfriend did to him? <laughs> Rambo's right. boyfriend? I've seen this Rambo. film. It's a bootleg. Well, there's a poet, Rambo, right? Yes. When I say Rambo, I really mean Rambo. He looks off French. his head off. Somebody <laughs> French. Arthur? To, a, no, he was a great writer. A poet. He was a poet. He was a great yes. poet. Rimbaud. He won a regional poetry competition in spite of sleeping through the first three hours of the exam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at 16, he <laughs> ran away from home with no money. And then between the ages of 17 and 21, he had this extraordinary flowering as a poet. But in doing so, he shared his life with some with. Dot, dot, dot. Katie Pry. Dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking 1871. 1871. A child prodigy, he was gay. In 1870s. Lover, who was also a poet, a famous poet. Wild? Gérard de Nervan. No. The, no, it's too one. early for wild. <laughs> a, a pet lobster, Gérard de Nervan. He did, indeed. We used to take for walks on a lead. Vite, vite, monsieur! <laughs> 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 Stay with it, because it's good. Because... <laughs> no! 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 <laughs> oh, Mr. Fry. That on the left is Vela, the one who looks slightly like John Malkovich. Oh. Um, <laughs> the middle is Rambo, and on the right is um, David Mitchell. That's Robert De Niro. It is Robert De Niro. It is Robert De Niro. Oh, no, it's totally De Niro. It is a bit, isn't it, on the right? <laughs> Young De Niro, it's for sure. De Niro. It so happens that Paul Verlaine wrote a poem of extraordinary international importance, mm. whose opening lines are. And, and did it those years. Years. <laughs> <laughs> Les sangles long des violons de l'automne. Yes. It's the start of the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah. <laughs> as we know, it's a code. A code, oh. a code to the resistance. Yes! 
Well, it's a, a rather... camp person decided that was the code. <laughs> 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 the question was, how did the lover hurt Rambo? Shut his fingers in the door. Yeah. The worst thing <laughs> 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 had a tumultuous, passionate, jealous rage, and he shot him in the wrist. Whilst oh. he was masturbating. Well... <laughs> I'm going to move on. It's for the best. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I am so out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Jamaican cuisine. I think we all know how to make cock soup. But how would you make manish water? Sorry, I don't, I don't know, know how to make cock soup. I don't know. It's kind of chicken soup. Oh, I see. Uh, is that what it is? <laughs> I thought it was some terrible euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> what, a euphemism for pheasant? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, pheasant. <laughs> Never cook pheasant. Not a clue. I have a cock. Yeah, yes, you've had a leaky cock. <laughs> no, because. No, listen, now. Manish water. No, no wait. No, don't. No, stop. No, no, no. Shush. No, don't. No, this is no. no. This is just off the rails. Oh, stop it. Manish water. <laughs> Come on, we're in Jamaica. Rice and peas, flying fish. Anything else? Uh, the goat. Goat. A male goat is the important thing. Oh. Makes manish water. It's also called goat's head soup. <laughs> it's an album, isn't it? Thank you. Goat's head soup by... What's his name? The greatest rock and roll band in the world, they call themselves? The Cleavers. The <laughs> Cleavers. <laughs> <laughs> right, in 1973, produced an album called Goat's Head Soup. Did they... And do you know mm -hmm. why they recorded the album on Jamaica? So they Free drugs. For the soup. They went, nope. Because uh, it was about the only bloody country on earth where they weren't banned. It's supposed to be an aphrodisiac. It's supposed to man you up. That's the oh. point. Uh, there's also cow cod soup made of bull's penis, chili peppers, and bananas cooked in white rum, which sounds rather nice. That is nice. That's yeah, nice. I like yeah. the sound of that. I'll just oh. up a little in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But where are fathers often barely older than their sons? In the insect world. It's got to be. Yeah. No, no, I'm talking about humans. Adoptions. Adoptions. And there is a country in which 98% of all adoptions are of adults, not of children. Japan. And, and it begins uh, with J, and it yes. is Japan. Very traditional to adopt an adult young man. It's business. If your own son is a bit of a clod, and I'm afraid it is a male business, this, yes. and you run a business, and you want it to stay a family business, what you tend to do is adopt a young man who is very bright, and you'll probably marry him to your daughter. Make them your son and then marry them Man to your yes, daughter? I know. Is there something... I know it's weird, but that is the Japanese way. Wow. And that would huh. take off in Norfolk. <laughs> <laughs> ongoing. Oh, it's right. ongoing to this day, yes, absolutely. Oh, crazy. Now, here cool. are two towns behind me. They both begin with J. Why are they blue? Oh, no, I know this. Oh, yes. I think well, I've been to the one on the one left. One if I've it's in Morocco, I can't remember its name. <laughs> no, I've been to Chef Chouen, which is a blue city in Morocco. I don't know. I've got a Smurf village I mm. created when I was younger. It's still there. And if this is wrong, I'm going to look like a total twat. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, you're going to look like a twat even if you're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 When they did the premiere of the Smurf film, yes. they painted a town somewhere, I think it was Spain blue for yeah. the premiere of the film. And then afterwards they said, we'll paint it back. And the residents had had such a lot of tourism. You are 100% oh, right. correct. Come on. Oh, right. OK. Yeah. The only thing, 20 points, was if you knew the name. 20 points. <laughs> <laughs> you will not destroy the set. Town. Juarez. Was no. it Juarez? No, that's in Mexico. Jerez. No, that's that's Hamin. Big switch. No, it's called Huen Huska. What's the other town? Jaipur. Yes. Ah. Well a point. No, 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 I misheard you. It's Jodhpur. Oh, yeah. I was like, I. Jaipur is the white city, I think. Jodhpur is the blue city. Why is Jodhpur blue? Indigo being the colour of the Brahmin. The and, Brahmin, it's and, a Brahmin. Uh, it was the to distinguish their cast. houses, and then mm. everybody else thought it was a good idea. There's also a pink city. Can you name a pink city? That was Jaipur. One. Yes! Yeah, <laughs> okay, Jaipur's the pink city. They all have. Been, yeah. I took a tour of Rajasthan, and all the cities have different colour names. What would you keep in a 14 ton jar with no lid? Biscuits. Yeah. Biscuits. <laughs> <laughs>
tadpoles. They're known as a jar <laughs> to archaeologists, if that's any use I, to you. Oh, yeah. yes. I did archaeology at um, university, Evening and uh, there's quite a lot of things that we don't know what they're for. Yes. And, and I think an this example. is one of those. Or oh, is this the field of jars in lab? Damn well spot on. I'm so impressed with you lot today. But yeah. That nobody knows what they were for, and then Marco Polo described them, and we now think they're for making goat's head soup. Granite <laughs> 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 is not an easy stone to work with. I mean, you make a nice kitchen surface for it. It's lovely oh, yes. for slicing. Yeah. Uh, slicing. Um, yeah. Slicing. <laughs> <laughs> writing. <laughs> writing. Writing. Exactly. Doing the wash. On eBay. EBay. The assumption is something to do with the journey of the dead. Yeah, but you always have to allow for the soul, and maybe... It's, it's one of those things where they thought, if I make a very big container, the gods will fill it for me with yes, bounty. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. We must always allow for the... Yes, right. beautifully put. And the fact is, the most honest archaeologists will say they don't know, A, how they were made, or B, exactly what they were for. They also may be a, a corresponding set of stolen lids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cambodia. Anyway, do you know the capital of Alaska? Juno. Yes, you just said it. Exactly. Thank ah. you. Very good. Juno is the capital of Alaska, uh, but there's something mm -hmm. unique about it. It here. rains all the bloody time, I know that. Um, well, you can't drive it's there. It's not accessible by road. Yep. You can no. only get there by air or water. There is no road. To like a lot of places on, in northern coastal BC. And can you tell me the biggest joke ever to come out of Alaska? Well, Sarah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they were ready for her. <laughs> Would have repudiated. We would have repudiated. <laughs> anyway, the point is. I, this is this is a volcano based practical yes. Yes. joke. Yes. Yes. And it's, if you do a practical joke, which is uh, you know cling film over the toilet, something simple. Yeah. The person who did this practical joke. <laughs> 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 it's a good one. It doesn't, it doesn't work for women necessarily, but for men, I tell you, it's a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> there was a volcano. Is this outside of Anchorage? Guys, or? Don't you decided worry. to try and, and make it seem as if it was erupting, so took loads of tires. You are and flat. set fire to it, and then everyone came out of the houses and went. Everyone's just brilliant today. He took kerosene and smoke bombs and tires to set fire to it, but in fifty-foot letters. He did say, April Fool, and he warned the federal authority, but he forgot to call the Coast Guard, yeah. who did panic a bit. And as it happens, that's the end of tonight's questions. On Plus 15, a clear winner, Susan Kalman. Oh, this is your first episode. Cool. Well done, Susan. On 11, <laughs> Sandy Togsby. Very strong showing. Plus four, Bill Bailey. Perhaps the best we can say is, bless him, he did try. Minus 11, Alan Davis. <laughs> Three positive scores, that's pretty solid. They were smart this episode. Thank you, good night, and be wonderful to each other. Bye-bye. That was a fun one. There's times where if you just give me three guests that I'm a big fan of, it doesn't matter what topics come up. It doesn't matter if there's like, you know, one riotously funny moment in the episode or not. Um, it's just going to be a good time. It, it's just going it, to, it's feel good TV all the time with QI. But, but, you know, you get, you get Sandy and Bill and Susan and it's just like, oh, I love them all. This is, this is going to be great. And it was, it, it was, it was lovely. It, it got chaotic and almost off the rails a couple of times and it, none of it mattered it, uh, like everyone was riffing on each other everyone was participating it, it just felt really it, it felt like a wonderful dinner party that i wish i was invited to um and now i'm hungry <laughs> now nah, it was a great episode thank you guys so much for recommending it to me thank you guys for spending a little bit of time here today on meal talks and hanging out Thanks for doing all the fun algorithm stuff. And until next time, everybody, take care, stay healthy. We'll see you soon. Cheers.